Hi guys, Todd here. Tonight we're go <laughs> tonight we're going to be having a look at um, this is bonkers. This is just when I was in Stuttgart, um, I was given this. Now I got to meet the guy that that makes it, and uh, I, I got to meet the the guy called Ollie. Um, it was it Oliver or Ollie? I can't remember. Um, he actually did a build for me on it and set it all up. And every single day since I've come back from Germany, I've been vaping away with this, trying to get my head around it because it really is a strange old thing. It's the Typhoon or the Typhoon BT. Now people were going batshit crazy for this in Germany. I mean, never ever seen cues like that for a product ever in five years of vaping. I've never seen anything like that. Now I will say it from the outset that this is not my vaping style, this really isn't. Now the Typhoon GT2 I thought was a tremendous RTA, it was one of the greats. Uh, the flavour from it was tremendous. This is a cloudy so and so. This really is, it's, if you're looking at this thinking uh, Typhoon, you know, it's going to be mouth to lung action and all that kind of thing, forget it. It's not. Uh, they did say to me you can turn it down and you can. You can turn it down and do a restricted lung hit. But I just don't believe that it's that's what it's about. I don't think it works that great like that either. Uh, and I'll show you why I think that as we go along. Um, if you open this up, and, and I kid you not here, I mean I'm vaping at 80 watts just now and it's not a hot hot vape. Um, you can vape this about 80 watts and, and it's it's quite actually quite nice. You can vape this well over 100 watts if you want that warmth but just now it's strange. The, the strange strange thing about it is that this is actually up the top here in the, the build deck uh, it, it's cotton but it's stainless steel mesh as well and there's also stainless steel cable going on in the tank as well but I, I'll show you all that in the close-ups it's 139 euros this is going to cost you and uh, as we go along I'll put up a little slide and I'll have spec and all that jazz going on uh, this is more my experiences with it and what I think uh, I will show you as best I can if you want to see a really detailed review go at this you may not follow the lingo but if you go and watch some of the German reviews I'll link to them down below and uh, they take it to bits and do absolutely everything and they do it very very well but um, close-ups when you buy this it's going to come in its own little travel case it's got its own little handle there and everything I think the lighting's playing up here anyway we'll carry on you open it up you'll find one big old atomizer sitting in there and underneath you're going to find some stainless steel mesh uh, you'll find some spare o-rings you can check the authenticity of the device using this card here and you have a guide here on how to dismantle the device and how to throw a build in it now since I've been thrown out of the house uh, I thought I would break this down completely and, and show you just building it back up uh, it's a very interesting device this First thing I'm going to do is just put the tank together. So you have here's the, the bottom of your device here, and yes, it does have Typhoon BT and all the other relevant information on the bottom. We have a Pyrex glass tank here, which just pops on like that, and we also have this, which just pop on here. There we go take my positive post and it just goes up there like so you can see it coming up and you can see that you've got all these I'm not sure what this material here is I really do not know but basically you're just going to take that like that that's just going to slot over there like so and that goes down and then we just screw this onto here and that tightens the whole shebang down for you now when you screwed it back together, I mean what I did find is when I went to unscrew the first time, uh, oh god this was tight, it was very very tight, so make sure you use a flathead screwdriver that's the width, you don't want to try and damage this at all. 
Uh, so there we go. I mean, the tank and filling the tank, you actually fill it through these bits at the top here. And it's a 5mm tank, but once you get the build on it and the cotton around the top, it actually holds another 2mm of juice in that cotton. So you really do have about 7mm going on here. Now the way the wicking works is you have three holes and when you do get this it comes with uh, your stainless steel wire or cable and I think Ollie or Oliver said that this was 7x7 seven seven, this. I make it about 28.7mm in length give or take and all you're going to do is just drop that boink in there like that. And you do that with the other three. But as I said, they were already in there when I got this device. And I'm assuming that when you buy it, they're already going to be in there as well. Now, I used cable or wire, whatever you want to say, uh, years ago. Um, and I've always found it to wick really, really well. I did enjoy using it back in Genesis days. And it's no different with this device. I mean, it really does soak the juice up and you know keeps the cotton really, really wet. I have tried changing flavours on this uh, once the tank was dry and I don't find that the, the actual this retains the flavour of the e-liquid, it just wicks it up. What you could do if you want and what we used to do is you can always, you know, you can tip this upside down and knock those out and you could flame it if you wanted to, if you're worried about, uh, you know, it retaining the flavour. But these guys should do you for months. Uh, now this is where it starts to get rather interesting. Now, we have these two pieces here and they just slot into there like so. And this is what we're going to trap our stainless steel mesh with. Now, as far as the stainless steel mesh goes, you do get some with it. Uh, I've just cut this five centimetres across here and the length is just, it doesn't really matter, you'll see why in a second. Uh, but uh, this is 300 grade and that seems to be what everybody recommends. Uh, you will see that these slots that are going on here, so I thought you would just, when I first did this, I thought you would just put this mesh in here, slide it right down to the bottom and then stick this pin in, but it, it's not quite as easy as that. Uh, you've got to be careful that you don't actually crush the mesh when you're putting it in. I also find putting a little curve on the, the mesh as well seems to help because you're, you are going round, well not round a corner, but it's not just straight across if you like. Can you see how the mesh is still raised there? I've not put it all the way down. Well, grab my pin and I pop my pin in there now and then I just kind of move the two of them down together. I'm just going to slide that mesh down. There we go. And that's the pin in. Now you can still pull in that. You can change the tension on it and so on. But what you're actually wanting is this well that's sitting in there just now, that's going to be crammed full of cotton. So your mesh is almost going to be curved round the line of that well. So once again, I've just trapped my mesh in there. You can see that. I'm going to take the other pin, pop that in there. Just spinning that as it goes down. Push. And there we go. And do you know that's pretty much bang on where it is. It could maybe come in just a little bit. There we go. That'll do. So there we go. That's it. Now, should all, you know, these holes at the top, as I said, you can fill your tank through these holes here. I'm just going to snip some of this off. There we go. I left just a little bit there just in case I need to pull that out a bit, just in case it's a bit too short. Now when it comes to cotton, first things first I should say, you'll notice I didn't flame this mesh. There's no need to do that apparently. Uh, all he did say, it doesn't matter if you do it or not, but he didn't see the need to do it, so I have not been doing it. I did, however, when I changed flavour and changed cotton before, I did dry burn it if you like. I pulsed it until it heated up just to shake off the old flavour and didn't seem to cause any issues. Now this is a Muji pad here I've got here and I've just cut it to, you know, the deck to the top of the posts there if you like and it's just one strip. Now this is, and, and I don't know if this is right or wrong, I don't know but it worked for me. Uh, I mean all I actually did was I just started rolling it like this, not too tightly, uh, it's not packed. and. Remember, this is going to get soaked with liquid, so it will expand. But, uh, 
you can see there it's not going to fit in exactly so I'll just take it back a little bit and I'll wrap it a tiny little bit tighter and I'm just going to pop that down there I'm just kind of twisting it as I push it down and down she goes right that's not perfect but it's now time to get out my little pointy implement so remember you've got this big well down here and you want that cotton to be you know spread out across that well and you want to make sure that the cotton is pushed right into the back corner uh, you know so it's making contact with this mesh here if you don't do that then you will suffer from dry hits and uh, not dry hits but hot spots I should say uh, so you want to make sure it's all nice and tidy in there get it pushed right into the back of here so you can see that I've got the cotton coming down and it's spread round and it's filling that well there and it's poked right in at the back I know that there's cotton making contact right in behind that mesh there so I'm quite happy with that so I'm going to start priming this with juice and as I said it's going to hold about 2 mil. so before so before I start priming the cotton I know that I'm happy with that I'm just going to fill this up I've just got some this one here and just pop that down there and squeeze away uh, next job is to start priming this cotton and as I said this takes about 2 mil of juice to prime this thing and I'll be honest, it's not something you can rush. You really just have to make sure that it's fully saturated. Before I forget, I'm just going to snip off a little bit of that excess there. There we go. So again, make sure that this is making good contact with the mesh. I am making this look like a bit of a meal. It's, I'll be, you know, it's actually, once you get used to this build, it's actually quite an easy process. Now I've popped this on a mod and it's come out just under 0.5 and it's at 70 watts just now and just to let you see this no problem there let's bump it up now we're at 90 watts show you that there and I totally clouded out uh, <laughs> the camera lens there right Here's your cage, uh, so this just slides on over these o-rings here, right down, and it just threads onto here. Uh, you can see we've got Typhoon BT going on around here, and you know, you, you don't have to take this off to fill it, as I said, you can fill through these holes here, so no problem at all. Uh, air holes, lots of air going on here, lots of air. Now the way this works is we have this cap here and from what I can gather is that you know these pop on and you can spin this round and see how you can reduce the amount of airflow. So the air coming in, pull that back off, obviously comes in through these holes down the bottom and then back up into the chamber. Now it's a big hoofing chamber. I mean I'm actually being honest here, just checking that build. I've not got that's maybe a bit smaller than my other builds that I've done it's not as I've not got as much cotton in this one uh, but yeah it's, it's a big old chamber so when you put that on and this is the drip tip that came with it that just threads on and you can see why I'm saying that it's really not a mouth to lung tank I know they said you can close it down but with a bore that size and that size of chamber inside I just really don't believe that it's a mouth to lung device in any shape or form or even try and run it greatly, you know, a really restricted lung hit, it, it's still not. This thing's meant to be chucking clouds, it's as simple as that. Now this is about 63, 63.28, 63.3 millimetres, not including the 510 but I have included the drip tip with that. It's a big old beastie. 5ml of juice, 2ml up the top, 7ml in capacity, uh, it, it's it's a big beast, 23mm in diameter as well. Ah oh, shit, you know what, I think I just blinded myself, um, <laughs> I forgot to put the diffuser on my, my lamp for when I do the close-ups and wow that was bright, uh, I hope it didn't affect uh, the quality, uh, anyway, right. It, it, it's, it's a beast, this is insane this thing um, now it may have looked like a bit of a meal of me building that there 
it's not. I mean, all you've got to do is, is really the cable stays in there. You don't have to take that out. Fill in it's a doddle. If you want to rebuild it, all you do is pull that cotton out, quick fire on the mesh, uh, that'll you know burn off any residue or clean it up, and then jam that cotton back in again, and boom, you're away. All you have to do is make sure that that cotton is, is wedged right into those back two posts as well. You have to make sure that there's cotton pushed against the mesh all the way around. If you don't, then you will get dry, you know, hot spots. That's the word I was looking for. Fully open with this. Yes, there's a lot of air going through this, a lot of air. And now this is 90 watts. And it is coming out at 0 0.46, but it's not 96 watts on your normal run-of-the-mill coil. You have to remember that this is a totally different vape. Um, here we go. Do you know the flavour is not bad? And that is not hot. It's, you know, we've got cold, hot, warm in the middle. It's just slightly past the middle, going towards the hot, but it's not what I would expect from a 90 watt vape on a 0 0.5 ohm coil. <laughs> but you do get the dense clouds that you would get from a 90 watt vape, that's the thing. There's one thing I forgot to show you in the cotton. Uh, like I said, uh, I think my loop of mesh was a bit tighter smaller in diameter than I've done in the past. Uh, it's normally a bit more open and I've got more cotton in there. There's a bit less than I'm used to. Uh, but it's still vaping away fine. Uh, I did notice when Ollie was built or Oliver was building this that once he had his nest of cotton in there and it soaked, um, he would take his tweezers and he was prodding the middle and making sure that it was beefing right out. That's very, very important, that bit. Now, do you have to vape it? at 90, 100 watts and whatnot. Well, they do say that, they, you know, you should start from about 75 and up in this thing. But, I mean, 75 watts. It's still clouds. But for me, who it's still, it's got good flavor. It does have good flavor. Uh, but I can take it down even further. And 65 watts. That's just on the edge there. That's I listen. They say you should vape it at a certain wattage and whatnot. Uh, as always, and I say this all the time. Um, take it down low, ramp it up a little bit at a time until you get to where you like it, not where somebody else tells you it should be. It's what you like that matters. And for me, uh, 65, 70 watts seems to be my sweet spot with a custard in it. You might be different. And going on the Germans I see, I've seen walking about in Stuttgart, they were just 100 watts going crazy. Uh, pros and cons in this device, okay? Typhoon build quality. It is built very, very well. I'm very impressed with the build quality on it. I can't... If you've had a Typhoon in the past or a Typhoon in the past, then you know how well they are made and this continues the tradition. The packaging, everything, that's great. It comes with the cable inside the tank already. You get mesh with it, you get all the O-rings, you get full instructions, all that's good. Disassembling it, putting it all back together, cleaning it out. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a chore, but it's it's not the hardest atty I've ever had to take to bits. And uh, yeah, I don't have any hassle with it in that respect. It is a glass tank and you do have this cage around it to protect it. And it is in keeping with other German tanks. It's It may not be what people love on over here, but I'm actually, I don't, I don't find it that offensive. But I've been living with it for over a week now and I'm kind of used to it. The wicking, the wick, it just wicks like crazy. It really does wick like crazy. You just need to get your cotton sitting down on top of that, those three cables, and, and it just not a problem with wicking. So all in so far, it's going really well. And the, the rest of this really comes down to my 
personal, the, the, the way I vape, and, and this is maybe the strange thing. Now, on a, a 0 0.5 ohm traditional coil, I would probably vape about 25, 30 watts. That, that's where I would vape if I was building my own coil and using cotton in a normal RTA. And that's where I would be. Now, I have to take this to 75 watts. I am using much more battery power and I am using a shit ton of juice at that level. It's really strange. So there is a trade-off. If you're used to being here and having a really good vape, you're using X amount of wattage, X amount of juice, and you're just sitting there quite the thing. Triple that to get the same kind of vape. That's not strictly true. Not the same kind of vape. You will get the same kind of flavour. You'll get a lot more vapour production, but the flavour you really need to ramp it up to get that flavour. And that's not a trade-off I'm really happy with. I personally do not want to consume more juice and more battery power just to get that flavour that I'm used to. Now, if you like lots of vapour, this, this will knock your socks off. It really will, because it just chucks clouds out. But at that kind of power output with that kind of juice consumption, it should bloody well do it. You do have that adjustable airflow, and, and yes, you can take it down to a, a tight, tight-ish uh, direct lung inhale, a restricted direct lung inhale, but because of the size of that mouthpiece and the size of the chamber in there, it's, nah, I just don't think it's designed for it. It's just, it's, this is open the thing halfway, fully open, ramp it up, blow some clouds and you will get flavour as well. I like the juice filling system, I think it's really easy to fill with juice and and it's a strange, it's, I'm intrigued by it. The mesh and the cotton is something that really I'd never seen before. I think there's one other tank that actually has it, somebody sent me a link. Uh, it's been out once before but it's the first time I've seen it and and it intrigues me. I love new things, I love seeing something new. Uh, the fact that you have to use cable, you have to use cotton, and you have to use stainless steel mesh, three materials in one tank is, uh, some people might see that as a bit of a, a faff, and some people may see building it as a bit of a faff, but hand on heart, I am a lazy vapour, really lazy vapour, I like to just chuck a building and go. This isn't really that hard work, it's not as complicated as I thought it was when I first saw it. My humble take on it is that if you like lots of vapour this is for you. If you want a high-end RTA that that chucks clouds this is the one. This this is pretty amazing. Um, if you like the thought of a different kind of build that wicks really well then yeah this one's for you as well. If you are like me and the whole thought of using more juice than you have to and more battery power than you normally would have to to get the vape that you're used to then it's definitely not for you I'm afraid it, it really isn't um, and, and I have to be honest on that one I'm not going to lie to you but once again that's my take on it that's my take on it other people may disagree as much as it intrigues me as much as I think it's built really really well it's not something that for the way I vape I would choose to buy but I'm having so much fun with it. <laughs> I want to say thank you to Thomas, the man behind it, and uh, I think his missus, is it Suzanne? She reached out and said hi as well. Uh, to Ollie, or Oliver, I can't remember which one it is. Uh, thank you for building, building it for me when I was in Germany. Uh, and, uh, you know, go and watch the other videos, go and watch the German reviews, and just watch them. You might not understand them, but you'll get a better understanding of how to build it, probably better than I do. But, but that's it from me. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye, guys.